All right. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about Phoenix tonight. Who in here knows about Phoenix? Phoenix framework. Cool. It is hot, isn't it? All right. Phoenix is like what Rails is to Ruby. Phoenix is to Elixir. So Elixir is the programming language. Phoenix is kind of the web framework that's built on top of Elixir. And there's a lot of cool things that Phoenix has been doing over the past couple years. And I'm going to go over one of those kind of newer things tonight. And we're going to be building a, an application that pushes live updates to the browser. And we're going to do it within 20 minutes. We're going to do it live, which is going to be fun. All right. We're going to convert a normal application driven by a controller. And you have to refresh to get new information. And we're going to move that to it's just pushing information to us. All right. So let me start the server here. And I'll show you what we're going to be looking at. Uh, over here. I've got a, um, a list of companies. So we got the symbol, uh, the ticker symbol. Uh, we got the name of the company, and we have the latest price. Okay, so this is kind of like you want to track your stocks, your portfolio, or whatever, and you want live updates for this, so you can always have the latest pricing. Well, right now, like in a typical web page, you kind of have to sit there and then be like, "Well, I wonder the prices now." So hit refresh, and it refreshes. You get new prices. Uh, what, I wonder what's going to happen now. So you hit refresh, you get new prices. Uh, these are not real prices, by the way, so don't go investing based on these prices. Uh, <laughs> These are real companies and real tickers, but I made up the prices. Um, but in the background, I have a, a background job running that basically updates uh, these prices every two seconds. So every two seconds, uh, if I press reset or refresh, we're going to get a new price for all these different uh, companies here. Okay? What we want to do is make it to where every time those new prices come out, the server tells our browser, hey, I've got new prices, and we'll push out those prices, and we'll just see the updates. We don't have to press anything. We can just sit there with you know, our whiskey sour and watch the prices go up and watch our portfolio go. <laughs> By the way, this is a bull market. Uh, so two-thirds of the time, the price goes up, and one-third of the time, the price goes down. So invest now. So let's look at some code. Here is the controller. And if you do a lot of Rails, a lot of this will probably look kind of familiar. Um, one of the cool things about Elixir and Phoenix, in my view, is that it looks very Ruby-ish. And a lot of people who created Elixir and Phoenix came from the Ruby and Rails land. So it's easy to kind of jump back and forth. Uh, but here we have an index. Um, it takes a connection and some parameters. We don't really care about the parameters. Um, and in there, we're taking the companies. Uh, I've got the background job is basically a fake database I've made. So um, the companies are actually in a real Postgres database. So when we first refresh that page, uh, it goes and grabs the company names and tickers, and then it just makes up some prices and pushes that into the companies. And then this render here just says, hey, with this connection, we're going to render the index.html page. And um, the companies here basically says, these are assigns. And that assigns keyword is going to be kind of interesting here in a second. It's kind of like if you were in Rails land, um, when you have a controller, you do something like uh, companies equals companies. And then that would be passed into the view, and we could use that in our view template. Similar thing here. In fact, let's take a look at the view. Uh, let me resize my browser here, or my uh, editor. So let's take a look at the index page. And here is what we're rendering. Okay, So we've got a simple uh, div, a couple divs. We've got a prices class here, um, our h3, and then our table. Uh, real simple, but here's the interesting part. So we have for company in companies. And you can see that a sign we, we assigned earlier of the companies is actually the, the at symbol and then companies in the template, just like it is in Rails. So it's kind of easy to do that. So for every company in that um, list of companies, we're going to create a row, put out the symbol, the name, and then um, Elixir is built on Erlang, on top of Erlang. And there's some functions that Erlang does better, so you can try to jump back into Erlang if you need to. And this is kind of the how you do that. So Erlang has this float to binary function that basically takes a, f a float and turns it into a string. And in Erlang words, um, a string is a binary. And so I use this because it has this decimals two option. And so we can say, even if it's dot one, it would render it as dot one zero, just to make it look like a, a currency. So that's all that is doing. All right, so we've got the traditional controller. We've got the traditional view. We have, to put, we have to refresh to get the new information. So the first thing we need to do is move off that traditional controller. Um, to do that, I'm going to go into the mix file here. And this basically um, helps configure the, the very top level of our Elixir application. And down here, there's this depths function. And that basically defines our dependencies for our project. And so here, we have Phoenix Live View as a dependency, including the version number. And um, Phoenix Live View is still, in a, is still below a .1 release. So it's still being tested out, still being worked on. Um, but it's pretty stable at this point. So they're pretty sure they're getting close to the .1, or sorry, the 1. But it's also something you have to include if you want to use it. One of the nice things about Elixir and Phoenix is you can kind of mix and match the things that you need um, so you don't kind of blow out your software. So in this case, we do want it, and so I'll put it in here. I've already fetched the dependency and compiled it just for time's sake, so we'll move on from that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to, um, in our router, and just like in, in Rails, this kind of tells a connection where to go. Um, so we can see here in our scope, 
At the root scope, we have full stack web is going to be kind of our, our namespace. And then we're going to pipe it through this pipeline, this browser pipeline. And this basically sets up some things for the connection that we need for these particular requests. And finally, we have, uh, we're going to accept get requests at our root controller, and it's going to go to the page controller, which is what we looked at first, to the index function. So we're going to remove that, and instead, we're going to say live at the root, and we're going to send that to page live. Okay? Now, um, this live function actually comes from a, uh, a new library that we've imported with Phoenix Live View, and so we also need to import that. So it's just, um, let me see here, let me make sure I get it right. Import phoenix.liveview.router. Improt. No, it's improt, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's teaching here? <laughs> All right, import. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the other thing we need to do is um, an in that index page um, has uh, a file name of .html.eex, and that's an elixir. Um, it basically renders elixir inside the HTML. Now, the live view expects that to be similar, but a little bit different. So um, let me go back to that index page. What we need to do is change, you can see down at the very bottom there is index.html.eex. All we need to do is rename that. So I'm going to rename file from index.html.eex to index.html.leex. That just means it's live. Okay? That's all we need to do for that. Uh, let me close that so we don't open that up in accidentally. So one of the cool things about live view is we're going to be writing zero JavaScript. So a lot of this stuff, push updates, you know, live updating on a web page without refreshing, a lot of this stuff you expect. Well, I'm going to have to write all these different uh, JavaScript things. I've bring in all these libraries, got to handle web sockets. All this is done for you. And in fact, the library size for what we're going to be using is actually only 29 kilobytes. Um, so it's super small. Uh, for example, like React is well over 100 um, kilobytes to download just the React stuff that you would need to kind of do a similar thing here. So it's very small. Um, and all we need to do is open up our, um, our app.js file here, app.js. And I've already got it in here. I'm just going to uncomment it. So these are the four lines of um, JavaScript we need. And I said, I'm not going to write any. I didn't write this. This is just from the guide. It says, put this in your code and do it. So I made none of this up. This is straight from the readme. Okay? Um, another thing we need to do is uh, in our endpoint, and a lot of this stuff is like, again, just from straight from the readme, we need to say, we're going to have a socket at slash live. And um, the thing that's going to be handling that is phoenix.liveViewSocket. So whenever we have a socket connect at that slash live, we want this particular module to accept it. Um, again, this is simply um, something that's provided by the readme. Now, another thing we need to do, unfortunately, is add a uh, signing thing, a signing salt, so that we have a secure connection here. Um, again, I'm just going to uncomment this, and this is what I just added here. So the live view signing salt, just some random, some random letters. The nice thing about Elixir and Phoenix is if I didn't do that, it would say, in fact, this is how I got this signing salt. It, I got the error, and it says, hey, you need to add signing salt, and here's a signing salt for you. Just copy this code, put it in your, in your, in your thing. So I did. Perfect. Now we can actually get to the stuff we're interested in, and that is, remember in the router, we had uh, this page live. So we needed to find that page live, right? Because right now, that goes nowhere. In fact, if we, um, let me reload my browser here, or reload the server. If we um, take a look at our browser and do a reload, uh, well, it actually is there because I have it already Defined. So if we look at this, I already have it defined for time's sake. I forgot I did that. Um, and this is what it, uh, the page live looks like, okay? Let me make that a little bit bigger. We're using Phoenix Live View, and that basically just brings in some uh, functions and some, um, some things we need to make this work. Again, that's straight from the readme. Um, alias just means instead of writing full stack dot every time, I just want to write fake DB. So anything after this dot, last dot is going to be, all I have to do is write that fake DB. Then render, I'll go render in a second. Mount is as soon as we get a request for this um, particular endpoint, so in that slash, that root controller, or not control that, that root level, we're, we need to call, it calls this mount function. The first parameter it passes is our session. At this point, we don't really care about sessions. Um, and it also passes the socket. And in that socket are going to be some of those assigns that we saw earlier. So that company's, um, that company's assign we saw earlier is gonna now going to be in our socket. And that's going to be kept throughout the, the whole duration of our of this person looking at our web page. And so um, this mount um, uh, function actually expects an OK and then um, a socket. And this assign function comes from Live View. It basically takes that socket and says, in the assigns, we want to put companies. And then um, from our fake DB, we want to get our companies. Okay, So that basically just sets the assigns. And then it calls render. So every time our page renders, this is, what, this is the function that's going to be called. In this case, we're going to do fullstackweb.pageview.render. Um, and again, we pass in our, the name of the HTML file we want, and then the assigns. 
and we get the assigns through the render function. It's already passed in, and it gets that from this mount. And in another place, too, here in a second, we'll see. All right, so you can see now, we're no longer going through our controller, because we completely removed that from our router, and we refresh the page, and we're still getting you know, updated information, but we, now, but we still have to actually press refresh to get it, because we haven't done any push yet. We just changed the place where we're getting the pull. So the next thing we need to do is actually make it live. To do that, uh, in our mount, we're going to say, you know what, if connected, if this socket is, has been connected for the browser, we want to do this. We want to um, do our fake DB, and we want to register ourselves. So I made this fake DB kind of like a pub sub mechanism to where you can have subscribers, and it's going to accept subscribers as registries. And then every time the fake DB has an update, it's going to call each one of those um, people who have registered, each one of these processes that have registered, and it's going to say, hey, I've got an update for you. And then it's going to be up to the person that, or the, the process that's registered to handle that update. So we've now registered ourselves. We need to handle those push updates, and that's down here. So we're going to define a new um, function here. In Elixir, um, whenever a process receives a message, it's typically called with this handle info function. And so same thing with LiveView here. We are going to handle it um, with this handle info. And uh, from the fake DB, all I've done is, is pass this update. So any time you receive this update message, this is what it's going to be called. If you don't know a lot of Elixir, um, Elixir functions are, use pattern matching. So we could do multiple handle infos if we wanted to and just say, you know, instead of update, we could do submit and have a socket. Um, we could do any, all sorts of uh, different functions that are still with the same name, but just different parameters. And it matches the first one that, that has a match, which is nice. So in this case, we, if we're going to match the, the update, and when we do that, we're going to um, say we're not going to reply directly to the person sending the message, because we're just saying, hey, we, you know, we're just going to get it. Um, and we're going to assign our socket some new parameters. So we're going to take our companies, and we're going to go back to our DB and get the, the new companies. So every time we get that update message, we're going to say, just go right back to the database and fetch new information. All right, I'm going to restart our server here uh, because we have that timer. So when I refresh the page here, now you'll see every two seconds, we should get new updates. So I'm not pressing refresh anymore. So every two seconds, the database says, I've got a new price for you. And the web page gets that through the web sockets, and it updates the, the web information for us. Cool, right? Perfect. So now we've got push updates. That was, what, less than 10 minutes? So what if we also added live chat? So let's do it. Let's add some live chat. All right, so back to our index page here, uh, index LEX. Uh, for time's sake, I also took this out into a snippet here. So let me close that. So I've got this uh, comments div. And all it does is sit kind of like our, um, our company's div here. Uh, at the very bottom, we're just going to take all the comments. And for each one of those, just render a comment in the class. Okay, super simple. Um, and then we're going to have this form. Uh, just like in Rails, we have form builders. So we're making a form for comments. Uh, the second parameter is what function will be called when we submit the form or what route it's going to hit. In this case, we don't want it to hit any route, so we're just going to put a, a pound in there. And in here is actually um, some uh, event handlers that we can set up. So in this case, we want every time that we hit submit or the Phoenix, um, the form gets a submit event, we want to send that to a function we're calling submit comment, or an, uh, an event we call submit comment. So it's going to push that event out to our page view, our page live handler. And then, of course, we're going to have a, a text input for comment. So I'm going to restart the server here again because we, we need uh, to do that because we did some assigns. Now, if we look at our web page now, we have an interesting error message. Unassigned comments not available in our EEX template. So that's really easy to, to fix. If we go back to our page live, Remember, whenever we mounted, whenever we got a mount call, this is the initial assigns we, we put into the web page. So in this case, all we need to do is now add a comments. And I've also got uh, pre-set up a get comments function here. Do that. I'm going to save that. And now when I reload, we should have a comment section here. And I've preloaded it with someone came in and said, first. Yeah. So we've got the first comments. We've got our comment thing here. And we can make some comments if we wanted to. Now, one thing I'm going to show you here. We, we, we set up that, that uh, form to say whenever you get the Phoenix submit uh, message, we want to send the, the handle submit message. But we haven't defined that yet. So when I hit enter here, you'll see it kind of stops for a second, and then it refreshes. It starts back up again. So we're now getting live refreshes. But what it's actually doing in the background, every time it hits hit enter there, it's crashing. One of the cool things about Elixir is 
the, the phrase is let it crash. We want it to crash. It's okay for crashing because it automatically kind of resets itself to a state that it knows is good. And so in this case, it already it reconnected the socket. It did everything. We don't get error messages we, um, that are uh, crashing our browser. It just all it did is it did not accept our, our entry in our form. But we still get that update, the live updating. Every, the push updates are still working and all that, which is pretty cool. But we don't want the, the error message. We don't want the crash. So we want to do handle event. And this is how we handle those events. And in this case, we did submit. Uh, what, was it? what did we do? Submit uh, comments is what we did. And then just like in JavaScript, Elixir has uh, a way to destructure maps and objects. So in this case, um, we named the form comments. And from that form, we had a field called comment. And we're going to assign that to the comment variable. And the cool thing is we can, just like in JavaScript, we can do that in the function definition. And then the third thing is it'll always pass that socket back to us so we know the current state of the world. So in here, we're going to take our comments. Or com yeah, we're going to get new comments. Actually, let's do it this way. I got my fake DB here, and we're going to add comment, comment. Now, I've um, created this particular uh, function to return the new state of all the comments. So um, we're going to save that here, or bind it to the comments. And then, uh, just like we did in handle info, we're not going to reply to the person or the, the process that sent us that message. But we are going to um, change the, the socket. So we're going to assign socket. Comments is now comments. All right, so now let's uh, reload this. Let me actually, I'm gonna go ahead and reload the server, just to make sure. Um, oh, one thing I want to show you, like, look how look how fast this is. So, like, we connected in microseconds here. Pretty cool. Okay, so add a comment. All right, we got comments. Woo! Right? It's a live comments. Fourth, it's the fourth comment. All right, so now we've got live commenting, right? Pretty cool. Now, what if we want to make it faster? Let's see what this thing can do. So every, we've got every two seconds, we get um, an update, right? So uh, that's not going to be good. You know, we need to beat those bots. So let me go and try a fake DB thing here. And you can see this is the line that sets up the timer. It says send interval. In this case, we've got it at two seconds, 2,000 millis uh, milliseconds. Let's change that to 500 milliseconds. All right, so let me kill that, restart it, because it's a timer. So now we're getting two updates a second pushed to the browser without a reload. You say, that's still not fast enough. OK. <laughs> Let's go faster. What about five times a second we want updates? So 200 milliseconds. I'm not ready. <laughs> You're not ready. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that go. Right? But wait, no there is more. Way. OK, so we're like, well, what could be cool? <laughs> oh, hold on. That's 16 milliseconds? You laugh. Watch this. Watch that. No, watch. What's up? Okay. So uh, I tried that with Firefox, by the way. I tried 60 milliseconds of Firefox. Firefox did not like it. That's, I don't use Chrome every day, but I'm using Chrome for this because I could, I could go to 16 milliseconds. Uh, so let's go back to 200 just to be a little bit easier on the, on the Chrome. Okay. So what if we wanted to make sure that all this information was synced up by, between browsers? Well, guess what? You already get that for free. So let me bring up another browser window here. Can you add a comment that was given to the Absolutely. Second, third. Fourth, 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 fourth. OK, so I don't know why this. There it goes. OK. A little late there. Yeah, what? Oh, come on. OK, so let me, um, I did something. All right, let me bring up uh, the known state that I know here. Uh, that is live. So go live. No, start. There we go. Nope. Go live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where was. Oh, shoot. Oh, I know because I've got all these changes. I'm going to stash them and delete that. Go back to start. Okay. So let me reset the server here. Let's try it again. OK. Uh, so, oh, by the way, you noticed I stopped the server and then restarted it, but our browser is still updating. So one of the cool things is it's auto, um, auto recovery. So it's still sending messages to Phoenix saying, hey, are you there? Are you there? Are you there? And it's like, oh, you're back. So I'm going to start getting data again. All right, so let's try this again. Let's go to localhost 4000. There we go. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's see if we can get, keep doing that fast, but add a couple more. Um, let's take this one down to AC, localhost 4000. There we go. 
All right, so one thing that I didn't tell you is this page scrolls. So we haven't been rendering these five times a second. We've been rendering, this is the full NASDAQ 500. So we've been rendering 500 tables five times a second. That's 2,500 DOM updates every second. And watch the scroll. Look, I can scroll that. Look, it's still smooth. Still smooth. You can enter comments just fine. Commenting here. You can see them come up over there. Just fine. So I don't know what, how much time do we have left. Do we have time to do something crazy? Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm going to open up my computer, and you guys on your devices, let's, let's see what we can do here. All right, so uh, this is the, the website here. So HTTP 3.8, let's see if I make that bigger. So this is always dangerous in a live coding situation, but I trust you guys to be adults in your comment section. <laughs> All right, 380c8420.ngrok.io. Let's see what happens here. All right, we don't have any favorite cons. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. All right, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch real quick to back over here and then move this over to the side. All right, there we go. Oh, yeah, they didn't say 4040. We don't want 4040. We want 4000. There's what we No, not 4040. Why is it doing that? In Grok. Hmm. In Grok. Yeah, I am on the free plan, so this, this is going to tax our, um, our Wi Fi and my free trial thing here. Uh, it should be HTTP, then the port. Okay, so in Grok, uh, HTTP 4000. I don't know why it's doing 4040. Oh, that's my web interface. All right, so unfortunately, we have a new uh, HTTP here. It's 83363A19, obviously. It's the, it's the best. All right, let me try it on mine, see if I can get to it. Yeah, so I can get to it. 83363A19. <laughs> Woo, hi, YouTube. Hi, Gio. Hey, guys. All right, cool, right? So you're all pretty much in sync on your devices? Drop table. Little Bobby tables. Strikes again. <laughs> oh, we got the poop. Okay. So that is my talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Live View is awesome. Phoenix is awesome. I actually wrote a book, Phoenix in Action. I've got some codes to give you if you want them. Come see me. Uh, thank you guys very much.